I have had a good bit of insecurity about the vaccines because of uh, a, a variety of um, poor press, I think, or, or uh, maybe some things having to do with uh, uh, scares. And of course, there have been some uh, frauds that have been uh, turned up. And uh, a lot of this does not give you a lot of confidence in vaccines, and that's vaccines in general. And uh, when I was uh, director of a laboratory in uh, Columbus, we made vaccines. And always when I had that vial of the vaccines that we had made ourselves, that we had used the greatest care in making, usually we just made them one vial at a time. And I used, we used the greatest of care in making these, but I always feel, felt some insecurity when I gave this to the patient, uh, thinking that uh, there was always some possibility of uh, contamination or something wrong with the vaccine. And although we tested it and uh, we did what we could to make certain that it was pure and good and effective, I still felt some insecurity. And so when the H1N1 uh, vaccine began to be made, uh, a number of happenings did not give me a lot of feeling of security about this vaccine. And I have with me my colleague at UG Pines. This is uh, Dr. Diane Burnett. Hello. Uh, she is the uh, chief of staff at uh, UG Pines, <clears throat> chief of the medical staff and a medical director. And uh, I'm happy to have you on the program with me. I'm very happy to be with you, Dr. And Agatha. I know that you have done some special study about vaccines. Uh, you are a mom, and uh, you had to face vaccines with your daughter mm -hmm. and uh, with yourself mm -hmm. when you were uh, going to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and uh, especially even higher education um, now is requiring students to uh, take vaccines. This is correct. And you know, it's, it is very interesting. Um, before I started medical school, um, there was a period where I felt that vaccinations were not safe. Mm -hmm. um, but then as I studied in my undergraduate, I took a course in immunology, and the whole idea of vaccinations to stimulate the immune system by using this infectious agent seem very logical to me. Mm -hmm. It's the way God made our bodies to work. Mm -hmm. And so I did have a period where I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. And going into medical school, of course, in the health professional, you are going to be exposed to quite a few things, particularly hepatitis B. Mm -hmm. And one of the requirements was a hepatitis B vaccine. Mm -hmm well with the mindset that this was safe and mm -hmm. of course it would protect me as I went through the medical training, I took the hepatitis B vaccine. Uh -huh. Now you talked about having some trepidation about vaccines. Well mine began um, right after taking this hepatitis B. Within two months of taking the vaccinations, I began experiencing arthritis-like symptoms, mm. particularly after I ate certain foods. Mm -hmm. I wasn't certain what it was until about eight years later when I came here to Eugene Pines to visit for my first time and, and worked with your husband, Dr. Calvin Thrash. He handed me a um, research article within the second week that I was here, and it happened to be on hepatitis B vaccine and its link to rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. I read this article and I said, Dr. Calvin, this is it. Uh -huh. This is when my symptoms started. Mm -hmm. Right after I had the hepatitis B, I started having this total body pain. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was even having some very severe hand pain. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what do I do now? Yes. And at that point then, he said, well, try going off with nightshades. And mm -hmm. for me, I'm very fortunate that staying away from nightshade foods like tomatoes and potatoes, peppers, my pains will stay away. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I continue to find more and more allergies to mm -hmm. food. And I do believe it's because of the effect of the vaccine on my immune system. Probably what happens is that uh, the vaccine uh, affects the immune system in a way that it starts making 
uh, irregular or abnormal antibodies. I believe this is part of it. So that was the beginning of my little bit of question and fear mm -hmm. with vaccinations and feeling that they weren't truly safe. And then, as you mentioned, being a mother, um, before my daughter was born, I was given a book called Are Vaccines Really Safe? And it mm -hmm. was by a man called, uh, named Neil Miller. Mm -hmm. It was just a little booklet and it didn't take a lot of time to read it, but he had some powerful arguments. And he went through epidemiology with the disease and how it was dropping before vaccines were introduced mm -hmm. and told us some of the um, potentially dangerous effects of vaccinations. So when it came to my daughter, at this point, I was not ready to vaccinate. Mm -hmm. So my daughter was not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until truly about, oh, what is this? Um, it's about six months ago mm -hmm. when a man, uh, Dr. Raymond Obamsawin from Canada, came through Yuji Pines mm -hmm. and he gave us a series of lectures on vaccination. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Raymond Obamsawin is uh, one of the public health officials for Canada. Yes, and he has been studying this issue for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So he greatly agitated the question here at Yuji Pines and got me into the study and of course at the in the middle of the summer was right when the swine flu issue was beginning to peak mm -hmm. so he started my research into this and he recommended some information that we got a hold of here and i i stayed up one night reading it and I tell you, my, my, I just did not feel good in my mm -hmm. stomach as I read truly mm -hmm. some of the, the research that's out there documenting how dangerous these vaccines are. Mm -hmm. One of the books that he recommended is um, by the man that I read of the book on earlier called Are Vaccines Really Safe? He has put out a more current a manual. It's um, a, a big book. In fact, it's, it I've there? got it here. Mm -hmm. Um, this has over a thousand document, documented research um, articles on every different vaccine and some of the problems that is caused by this. The foreword in this book, Vaccine Safety Manual, is by Russell Blaylock. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you're familiar with Russell Blaylock. Yes. He's a neurosurgeon, so his specialty is in studying the, the mind. Mm -hmm and he has a very keen interest in vaccinations and what they do, particularly in the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, vaccinations have a full body effect mm -hmm. because when you put a vaccine into the system, it is going to do just what it's meant to do, trigger mm -hmm. the immune system. Mm -hmm. And you are introducing an infectious agent and you are also, um, putting it into a carrier that also helps potentiate the effect of stimulating the immune system. They're called adjuvants. And these um, carriers, the two main substances that are in this formula are heavy metals, mm -hmm. particularly mercury mm -hmm. and aluminum. They're mm -hmm. the two main um, heavy metal carriers. They also use animal proteins. Now, animal proteins might not seem like such a harmful um, substance, mm -hmm. but when you put an animal protein into our body, that is not ourselves, and mm -hmm. our immune system recognizes that as a foreign substance. Mm -hmm. And so these things also stimulate the immune system. It would actually be better to swallow it. Well, it would to, because... Because the uh, digestive tract is accustomed to dealing with uh, proteins, that's whereas right. inside the uh, bloodstream, that's, uh, that's not a place where the uh, body is accustomed to dealing with foreign proteins. Right, and the, the liver also, as when you put it through the digestive system, at least the liver has a chance to modify mm -hmm. it so it becomes more of a usable food mm -hmm. to so the system. It, whereas in the bloodstream, we have to uh, enlist the immune system to take care of it.